I'm Joel Bryce, Vice President of Waterfowl and Hunter Recruitment Programs for Delta Waterfowl. In this next video, Matt Chenard, Delta's Senior Waterfowl Programs Manager, will introduce you to the basics of calling mallards and other dabbling ducks. I'll be using calls designed to mimic the sounds of a mallard hen. Mallards are the most common duck in North America and often respond really well to calling. Other species that are often found with mallards, like teal, gadwall, and pintail, will also respond to the sounds of a mallard. Let's start off with the basics of holding the call. This part of the call is called the barrel, and you will be blowing air into the opening at the end. The other end holds the reeds and is called the insert. Grab the end of the insert between your thumb and forefinger just like this. You'll use the rest of your hand to adjust as necessary to change the sound of the call. Put your bottom lip underneath the opening at the end of the call and place your top lip against the opening like this. Remember, blowing a duck call is like playing an instrument and you'll need to adjust your tongue and mouth to control airflow and create the best sounds. To blow the call, you need to bring up air from your chest. We use the same source of air to vibrate our vocal cords when we talk and you need to do the same thing to properly blow a duck call. Think of how you would fog up a mirror. <sighs> not like you're trying to blow out candles. We're not going to cover every type of call in this video, but we'll cover some of the basics. The most important call to master is the quack, because many of the advanced calls are just a series of quacks at different speeds and pitches. Even if all you can do is quack at circling ducks, you may be able to keep them interested and lure them into gun range. Using the air from your chest, say or quack. Allow me to demonstrate and feel free to call along with me as we go. You'll often hear hens making contented quacks while they're sitting on the water or feeding. Once you feel comfortable with your quack, you can move on to the greeting call. The greeting call is essentially five quacks with each quack a little shorter and quieter than the last. Here's what it sounds like. You can see how I'm opening and closing my hand for each quack. You can count the quacks in your head to help you with the rhythm. One, two, three, four, five. The greeting call is really useful when you first spot ducks at a distance and want to make sure they see your decoys. The next call I'll demonstrate is often called the comeback call. It's similar to the greeting call, but with a faster cadence and more pleading sound. Ducks usually have five to seven rapid quacks in their comebacks. If ducks ignore your greeting call and are leaving your area, many hunters will try a comeback call. Like anything, the key to becoming a better caller is practice. You've got to find the right amount and type of air to make ducky sounds. Once you do, you need practice to teach your muscles how to make those sounds repeatedly. One of the best ways to get better at duck calling is to visit a refuge or park in your area that has some wild ducks, especially in the fall and winter when they're most vocal. Listen to the different sounds they make and when they make them and try to mimic them. You'll quickly notice that not all hens sound the same. Some may sound more raspy or use a different cadence, they will also make some crazy sounds, so don't worry if your calls aren't perfect. My final thought about duck calling is about when and how much to call. As you spend more time hunting, you'll learn to read the reactions of ducks to your calling. Depending on the day, ducks may want to hear a lot of calling or none at all. If the ducks have their wings cupped and headed towards my decoys, I usually call very little and watch them closely. If they start to turn away, I may give them a pleading greeting call to try to keep them headed to my decoys. Hopefully they'll end up in gun range. Good luck. 